I've now had the Panasonic GH4 for 4 years and it's basically the only camera I've used during this time. Which is kinda insane. So in 2014, I went from this to this. It was a giant leap for Eric Kind back then, indeed. Sure, before getting a GH4, I borrowed a Sony A77 from my friend Björn time to time. But now I finally had a quote unquote DSLR type of camera of my own. To be perfectly honest, I knew nothing about cameras or lenses back then at all. Different sensor sizes, crop factors, focal lengths and apertures was just a mystery to me. At the beginning, getting the right lenses was a bit confusing. Especially when you ask people who are used to shooting with full frame cameras. What do you think about this lens? That's a good focal length for the wide angle shots. And at f1.8 it's a bargain for that price range. So you buy the lens, but it feels very unwide for a wide lens. And then you read up some more and realize that Micro Four Thirds cameras has a 2x crop factor. In short, the camera sensor is half the size compared to a full frame one, which means that you have to take the focal length multiplied by 2 in order to get an idea what field of view you're getting. So 25mm times 2 becomes the equivalent of 50mm, making it more suitable for portraits instead of landscape shots. If I wanted something that's close to 25mm, I had to get a 12mm lens, which would quote unquote become a 24mm one. To make it even more confusing, this also applies to the aperture as well. Uh -huh. <laughs> but this doesn't apply to the light transmission. Imagine life through an empty paper roll. At first, you see everything, then you see less, because you're a weirdo with a no budget telescope. The amount of light is the same, just cropped. Uh, I don't know, something like that. Now, my first impression of the camera's footage wasn't that great. Mainly because a lot of us saw this guy's videos. But Panasonic has added a couple styles aimed at filmmakers. Cine like D and Cine like V. They've also added a couple settings, master pedestal level and highlight shadow, that allow you to lower the highlights and raise the shadows to lessen contrast and increase dynamic range. This will result in a flatter image, but it provides more leeway in color correction. Now, to Hammond's defense, we were all caught up in the hype in the beginning and greatly overestimated the dynamic range of this budget camera system. We were all using the Cinelike D picture profile, bumping up the shadows, lowering the highlights, maxing the master pedestal, using eye dynamic, etc. And the results were, uh, well, really crappy. So here are the ultimate settings for unusable footage. Fortunately, I stopped with the nonsense and finally got to a point where I could appreciate the camera. Here are the settings I've used for almost 4 years. Nothing fancy, y'all. It has really served me well and I've learned a ton during these years. It was indeed a little game changer for its time with its introduction to 4K at this price point. Even though most of us just downscale the 4K footage to 1080p because it simply looks better than normal 1080p footage. To think that this 4 year old camera can shoot 4K for hours without overheating while some manufacturers are still having these issues. Now, before y'all start kicking my rump, saying that I'm just a blind Panasonic fanboy, I'm very much aware of the GH4 not performing well with low light situations. The autofocus is pretty much useless for video and the lack of in-body stabilization is kind of a bummer if you don't have Panasonic lenses. Also the 8-bit codec and the dynamic range is a bit lackluster. That said, I've had it for 4 years, I'm aware of its strengths, weaknesses and it hasn't died on me yet. In a time where a new gear comes out every week and some people change camera systems as often as they change underwear, I just don't. I used to be that person that watched all the new reviews and drooled over cameras I could never afford. I guess that you can say that I've changed. I care more about what's in front of the camera than the actual camera itself nowadays, which I think is a more healthy approach in general. Learn how to work with your camera not against it. As some historical figure once said, 
So stay creative, be epic and please subscribe.